What is up guys, welcome back to yet another brand new Mage Big Gaming video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day as always. Today we're talking about PlayStation 5 Pro yet again. It's that kind of time of the year and lots of stuff is happening with it. But I'm talking about it in a concept context of like, this console is incredibly important and is absolutely setting like the 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 uh, groundwork for PlayStation 6. So even if you're not buying this console as you're not getting the pro because you're not interested in it this pro console existing is better for you before when you go up and go upgrade to the playstation 6 whenever that thing comes out so we're actually going to be talking about the article that's been out for a little while um, which was from the Digital Foundry guys. And this is exactly what we're talking about today is how PlayStation 5 Pro lays the groundwork for the PlayStation 6 and beyond. Because obviously there are various factors to this. Things, just to sum it up, if you guys don't want to watch the whole video, to sum it up, it's basically stuff like, one, PSSR is going to be, it's an AI, AI upscaler, meaning it improves over time. The more you use it and the more it has updates over time, it is going to get better because it uses machine learning. So the longer they have this thing out, the better the next version is going to be where we get some more hardware from Sony. And also, do you not remember like how much beneficial some of the PS4 patches were to games that we now have PS5 um, versions of? So, so many PS4 Pro patched titles also run better on PlayStation 5. Um, anyway, let's get into this. So a new Digital Foundry weekly lands as usual today with the team's thoughts on the recent state of play, reaction to the most recent RTX 5080 and 5090 leaks, and perhaps inevitably more PlayStation 5 Pro. However, it's actually a point raised in last week's Digital, uh, sorry, Direct that I want to tackle in this week's blog. Many believe with some justification that the PS5 Pro is a step too far and that such a console isn't needed. In fact, we've made the argument ourselves. Looking back at that piece, I warned about higher costs of a pro console, but also looked at the potential improvements it could bring, all of which have come to pass with PlayStation 5 Pro. Microsoft declined the opportunity to follow likewise, but now we have some idea as to why Sony has taken a different route and perhaps more of a strategy is now understandable. Before we get into that, I wanted to uh, highlight an suit point made by one of our backers of the Digital Foundry support program. If you're invested in the PlayStation platform, if you're likely to go uh, skip the PS5 Pro, but will likely get a PS6, the arrival of an enhanced machine is likely very very good news for you. Let's rewind to the launch of the Series X and PlayStation 5. A fundamental aspect of their appeal was the fact that your existing library of games would carry forward to the new hardware. Microsoft made their plans clear to fans, but the message from PlayStation was confused, and yet ultimately, PS5 back compat worked almost as well as the Xbox equivalent. The continuity in game libraries from one generation to the next made the idea of switching platforms a difficult sell, something Phil Spencer himself has pointed out you guys can go watch this video if you would like uh, obviously phil spencer we know the quote we lost the worst generation to lose everyone bought their digital libraries etc etc um Another point of commonality between PS5 and Xbox Series X was their backwards compatibility prioritized support for their mid-gen console upgrades. PS5 ran PS4 Pro games while Series X opted for the One X code path. At a stroke, owners of the new consoles designed for 4K displays had access to great looking software that often presented with very impressive upgrades over the base equivalents. And this is important because there were a few games on the Xbox One X that ran at like actual 4K 4K 30, or some games ran at 4K 60 on the, the, the One X, but 4K 30, but because the PS4 Pro was actually a little bit weaker, those games were like 1800p 30, for example, here. And when you got the PS5 Pro, uh, sorry, the PS5 and the Series X, the Series X version actually looked better because of the great back compat on the Xbox One X and how powerful the, the One X upgrade was. So you gotta put that in perspective and this is gonna be the same thing here. We're gonna start seeing PS5 Pro patches. So when you get your PS6, you're gonna be running a PS5 Pro version, which is even better already, not a base PS5 version like the Xbox where we, we have to run, right? Not only that, the extra horsepower of the new hardware was brought to bear uh, on these older games more stable performance and increased quality in games with dynamic resolution scaling and unlocked frame rates one can imagine that the same thing will happen again with playstation 6 it will take all of the upgrades from ps5 pro and offer the same kind of cumulative improvements well we would hope so <laughs> the idea 
does rely somewhat on a robust form of back compat that allows for all the power of the new machine to be deployed on older games. So taking a look at PS5 Pro's game boost mode for older titles is going to be indicative of whether this is possible. We've already talked about the PS6 as well. They've already uh, confirmed or at least said, uh, and it's been leaked at least, that uh, they've gone with AMD hardware for the PS6, which means back compat is going to be in this thing. If you're wondering why there's doubt here, PS4 Pro's boost mode was only a small improvement while while PS5 mirrored certain elements of PS4 Pro's architecture, which may have made enhanced performance more easy to attain. PS5 Pro does not have as many commonalities. First order of business will be to test Elden Ring, which has unlocked frame rates across all modes. If boosts are in line with the 45% increase in performance mooted by Sony for its GPU, it makes the chances of future PlayStation hardware being able to do likewise more uh, viable. This is why I personally love the fact that games have unlocked modes on the consoles a little bit more. And personally, I think every game should have a like unlocked mode. So when you do get a new console, it's just gonna utilize that horsepower that's in the new system when you play it on newer hardware. That's one aspect of how the PS5 Pro may benefit people who aren't actually going to buy the console. Better versions of the games you own in the years to come. But now we need to look at overall, strat uh, overall strategic advantages for Sony. On the face of it, the idea of releasing a 699 pound and dollar console doesn't sound like a particularly good idea after all. However, the Pro innovates in the console space in a way that is essential for the hardware to come. The combination of CPU and GPU is now joined by machined learning silicon, as I said in the start of this video. PS5 Pro has demonstrated that the opportunities to increase console performance and features by simply producing faster, more complex CPUs and GPUs is now over. For a $100 price premium, Sony's doubled the size of the PS4 GPU in making PS4 Pro. Today with PS5 Pro, a $250 price premium over the equivalent digital-based model cannot do the same. Sony is achieving similar, if not outright superior results by adding machine learning silicon and amplifying graphics via AI hardware. It has also allowed Sony to add in enhanced ray tracing capabilities into what must surely have been a very tight silicon budget. And this is what I always talk about when we see the PS, uh, the PC fans very much criticize the Pro for the fact that the increase in price is more than what the PS4 to PS4 Pro is, but yet less power in terms of overall increase. And it's like, well, you could literally say the same about every single graphics card. The, the price increase between GPU is going up every time we go to the 40 series, the 50 series, the 60 series. This increase has just always increased, yet you're not just doubling performance ever, because in fact, the performance is getting less, but they're using things like AI. The 30 series to the 40 series jump was a significant price increase, and without using the new DLSS and also frame generation, that increase was far more for far less frames per second. The price was far higher for far less FPS. Um, it's the same across PC hardware for those guys. I can tell you right now that whatever console comes from Sony and indeed Microsoft next, they will be following a similar strategy at the base architectural level. Cost per transistor is not what it was and with consoles more than any other gaming devices, silicon costs are crucial. Gigantic increases in the size of GPU especially are unlikely to happen, but with AI we're only just beginning. As proven time and time again by Nvidia's innovations in the space, machine learning hardware offers a gigantic gigantic return on investment, but getting to where NVIDIA is now requires two things, investment and patience. And they've invested that uh, investment in the PS5 Pro, which is why it's huge. Looking at the criticisms of PS5 Pro today, I am reminded of the massive backlash against the RTX 20 series produced based on the Turing architecture back in 2018. The product were pricey, nobody bought into the AI narrative, ray tracing was um, derided, and yet today, DLSS upscaling has proven to be one of the most transformative technologies in the PC space, a desired feature for users and coveted by the competition. Ray tracing with smart technologies, innovations, and immersive level of investment in software like rest here 
and strategy partnerships with key game makers, NVIDIA bought, uh, brought actual path tracing to AAA games. None of this happened overnight, and yet NVIDIA has now effectively defined the uh, direction of travel for graphics innovation and consoles need to catch up. That's where PS5 Pro comes in. Sony has taken the smart path here, delivering the custom silicon required where AMD did not seem to have any, while at the same time developing PlayStation Spectral Resolution on the software side. We've now been eyes on with PSSR across a range of games and while there's still work to be done improving it, it's a big leap beyond existing upscale solutions. Talking about FSR, obviously. They've already said in their Digital Foundry videos, PSSR is a far better solution than even FSR 3. Not as good as DLS, DLSS yet, but again, this is their first iteration and their first iteration of PSSR is better than the first iteration of DLSS because DLSS is older and has got better over time like PSSR will. But we shouldn't forget that machine learning hardware isn't just a fixed function AI upscaling block. It can be used for all manner of tasks. PSSR delivers the biggest bang for the buck, but it's just the beginning. We're looking at such a big change here that absolutely we should be looking at PlayStation 5 Pro as the console that sets the ball rolling for Sony in an area of crucial importance. I'd even venture to suggest that PlayStation 6 may even need PlayStation 5 Pro to exist for this evolution to happen. Sony's technology group need time to develop technologies like PSSR and ship them and refine them. Meanwhile, developers need to grow accustomed to these technologies instead of simply focusing on them for their big PC games. Sony is not alone in these endeavors. Switch 2 will ship with it in 2025 with RT and machine learning silicon in its T239 processor. And unlike Sony, Nintendo has the benefit of tapping into Nvidia's existing technologies. And then there's Microsoft. Xbox president Sarah Bond has talked about 10th gen, delivering the biggest technical leap in ever in a generation. And I put good money on this referring to machine learning based technologies as opposed to a wallet busting giganta class GPU. I agree. This is absolutely going to be the biggest technical leap because of AI, not because of everything else. And AI is the future. Uh, we're already seeing Microsoft's auto SR upscaler come out of nowhere. And in putting together our coverage, I was surprised at Microsoft's willingness to talk to us about it. And there were some follow up conversations after we went live with it. Auto SR is impressive within its limits, but it's easy to imagine that a more robust DLSS like solution is in development for future hardware too. Auto SR as is could be deployed for back compat though. Going back to PS5 Pro though, we've now seen enough of the machine to say with some level of conviction that it does what Sony says it does. But more than that, with titles like F1 24, there's evidence that those that target the hardware specifically will see much bigger boosts than simply fidelity mode at 60 FPS. It's true, there's so much more in certain games. All these guys saying that there's not, it's ridiculous. This thing can do far more than, than even just do uh, fidelity mode at 60. Like it's already Already done more in games like F1 and we're literally not even at launch yet. PS5 Pro doesn't answer the value question conclusively not yet but it's delivering clearly superior results to the base hardware. More um, holistically though today's added enhancements may well be laying the, found, uh, the foundation work for the viability of 10th generation console hardware and in that sense its importance shouldn't be underestimated and this is what I think is so huge and the um, is really important is as we said at the start of the video this these consoles are becoming not viable we've heard it before like making more and more power showing shoving more transistors bigger gpus bigger cpus into these things is not something that they want to do because it's going to increase prices and the point and value proposition of a console is that it's a cheap entry and then you get into gaming and it's and it's powerful and it looks good but that's not gonna be achievable without this AI upscaling. And they have literally set the ground uh, groundworks ready for PlayStation 6, having all these games already being enhanced for PS5 Pro, meaning when you put a PS5 uh, disc in a PS6 and it's got a Pro patch, you're gonna have better graphics on PS6. And also the AI upscaling is the most important thing. That thing is being trained with the machine learning on all these titles. And when we go into PS6 with the second generation of PSSR or whatever they call it, if they call it like, PSSR 2 like they've done with DLSS and FSR then we're going to have a significant improvement over what the PS5 Pro is currently doing so this is a very important piece of technology and in incredibly going to help PlayStation 6 so whether you guys are buying PS5 Pro or not buying PS5 Pro this console existing is going to benefit you in the long run when you go out and buy a PlayStation 6 
that's what's the main point here that's what's important so let me know what you think down below in the comments do you agree with this do you disagree let me know thank you for watching and i'll see you in future videos bye bye for now